Hey everybody, sorry I've been kind of busy moving and everything else. I'm going to try this recording again when I got interrupted on the first try and when I looked at the results I wasn't too happy so I'm trying uh, an older software on on a newer setup meaning I'm trying the same recording software I did use on a Mac so we'll see how this goes. <clears throat> I'm also using a better external mic so hopefully that will help some. What I'm using is Affinity Designer. This is available for both Mac and PC. I switched over to Mac for some for my own reasons. It's not anything that I'm going to go into. It's just my personal preference. I will still, however, try to do videos with other software that I have been doing like Inkscape, excuse me, GIMP, things like that, and also other software that can kind of go both ways. And some that are only specific for the Mac platform. However, today's little, hopefully short one will be on Affinity Designer and some of the neat things it offers. Yes, yeah, lacking some things like perspective, bins and distorts, and envelope distorts, and a few other issues. But hopefully, maybe in the future they'll do it, but not in the newest one that's coming out. Not what I've seen of the beta anyway. Um, I personally haven't downloaded the beta, but I've known other YouTubers who have and put up some videos on it, and they ain't coming close to putting in these tools that this program, unfortunately, really needs. Because, it, you know, there are times that you're going to need to put things into those type of bins and distorts. However, this software doesn't do it. Getting back to the software, though, in its current state, it does do a lot of things quite well. And does it pretty nicely and for the price tag if you're wanting something to maybe check out that's not free but you know not exactly a, sub a subscription excuse me this might be a good way to go what I'm going to show you real quick today is how to take a photo it doesn't matter any photo and make and turn it into a pencil drawing inside of affinity designer now affinity designer has tools built into it for both vector and pixel or what they call raster images okay you don't have to really jump out unless you got to do some really advanced editing which is good for some designers who just want to get in get something designed and get it put out there for you know for whatever reason they need okay this tool excels in that again it needs some other things to it but hopefully it will it will get there but I've been using it for a while doing my own vectorization of a uh, truck one of my favorites, by the way, is a 65 Chevy. I mean, whether you like the truck or not is, hey, immaterial. But to me, it's one of my favorite trucks, and I hope to have one someday. <laughs> right. Anyway, getting back to the tutorial. What I got loaded in is just an image of a boxer dog here. He <clears throat> kind of reminds me of my old man that I had. This is one I just got free off the internet just for demonstration purposes. Now... When I tried to record this earlier, I said that you may have to go to what's called the Pixel Persona, which is located up here. I'll shake my mouse a little bit. Maybe it will. Nope, I guess not. And you just click this, and you notice that the tools over here change. Okay? And right over here, if we go back here, you got more of a vector set of tools. Okay? That's the cool thing about this, is if I needed to touch something up, I can do it. I don't have to leave this and then come back to it. I could just keep right on flowing through. There's more tutorials on this that Affinity also puts out, that other people put out on it. But if people are really interested in me doing a set like that, then I will do so. But I don't really want to kind of beat the dead horse kind of a thing. I haven't seen this done on YouTube. I've seen it done like in GIMP because I think I did one on it. I've seen it done in Photoshop, but I haven't seen it done in Affinity. And this may be a technique that you may or may not use. But when the time comes, it might be handy. So let's go ahead and get started with it. So over here, I'm going to sit there and uh, right-click on this and duplicate the object. Simple enough. Now notice down here, now this is called a studio, by the way. Affinity calls their, what some people would call a palette, a studio. Again, there are tutorials on the, um, on the internet that will tell you how Affinity kind of names things. So don't get kind of too off the, off the wall about what I'm saying here. So I just took this. 
I'm going to go down to the adjustments here. Now I could use black and white. I can use, you know, just something to remove the color. I can use hue satur saturation and sap the color out of it if I wanted to. I think I'll go to black and white. Because I might want to get a little bit better contrast to this animal here. Quickly, just do this real quick. Some colors are not going to take effect as much as others. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, if I was to dismiss this by clicking the X, it's going to create. I'll go ahead and do it. This is going to create an adjustment layer that you can come back to later and/or mask out. Which, if you if you like those popular um, splash of color type effects where everything's in black and white but a certain thing, or everything else is in color but one thing, you could do it here. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to do my pencil thing, which is, again, a takeoff of what I've already demonstrated with GIMP and other people done with Photoshop and the like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually select that, right-click on that, and say Rasterize. That will make that change permanent. Yeah, I need to check the trash cans, obviously. Oh, yeah, it's 10 o'clock. If you see some of these things flash up on my screen, folks, it's because... I have some issues going on with me. If I don't keep myself on a schedule, I'm going to forget things, and then I feel like I'm out of place. So, yeah, as soon as I get done with this, I better check the garbage. You know I can literally look over here and see and say, eh, it's got a little bit to go. But anyways, let's jump back to this because I'm getting kind of off topic here. I'm going to duplicate that again, and it will duplicate right on top of itself. And now I'm going to go over to the same little icon down here adjustments and I'm going to choose invert which is going to invert all the tones to its other values and again I'm going to rasterize that now you don't have to rasterize each and every time like I'm doing however because I'm screen recording and this is a little bit older Mac even though I've juiced it up a little bit I'm still not going to try to tax the machine heavily so I'm going to try to rasterize as I go but you don't have to and if you don't then you can always go back and adjust things and it will change the output a little bit differently. Now with the top layer selected, I'm going to click on the blend modes here. And notice how Affinity, as you go through the blend modes, shows you a live preview, which is really nice. And I want color dodge. Now it should turn white or almost white. Here it turned almost white. You can see a little bit of the dog's eyes, a little bit of the bottom of the muzzle, top of the ears, and that's fine. But now, we need to blur this. Now, you can go in and grab the blur tool or the soften tool and try to do it that way if you want, if you want to put in strokes and everything else. But I'm going to just real quickly do this. So with that top layer still selected, my, my one I turn to color dodge, I'm going to go down to layer effects. And look what I have right here. Gaussian blur. I'm going to select that and come over here and start cranking my radius. This didn't turn out as well because of that white chest because I didn't get the contrast up, but that's fine too. Is there something else we can do with this to kind of make it a little better? So I'm going to say okay to that and close it. Now that doesn't look too pencil-y. The good thing is about this because we got a layer effect, we can go back in and change it before we get too crazy. So let me back that off. Okay, that's good. All right, close that. Now. If I wanted like a little bit of color to this, if I want to make this more like a color illustrational type of look, what you can do is select the one on the bottom, our original, move it up to the top, and again, go through the blend modes to find out what would work for you in your particular instance. See, this is such a low-res image, you can see the blocking in it, and that's why I say maybe this one wasn't a good uh, one, but if it was a lot cleaner, that'd be a pretty cool look. Overlay, hard light. Uh, let's see what pin light does. Uh, I'm going to do pin light, and I'm also going to back off the opacity a little bit. There we go. That's what I like. But I mean, again, this is your. This will be your drawing. How you do things. You know, don't worry about it. Now I'm going to group these together by selecting one, hit holding shift, going to the bottom. And right click and we'll say group here. 
All right. Now what you can do um, to make this look better, because again, this bottom didn't really turn out that good, but say like if you just only wanted the top, you can always draw something around here and, and kind of group it in and everything else. And, and that's what I'm going to try to do here is I'm going to take maybe a circle. Let's get a circle here, kind of get it to about the shape of the puppy dog here. All right. Now I'm going to offer that circle up into here. Whoop. Didn't get it exactly right. Here we go. And that's how you mask out, by the way, is if you, um, <clears throat> let me show you that again. Pull it out here. There you go. And this is going to show up, so we'll have to kind of do something about that. But <clears throat> you could take an object. Pull it in, and it doesn't matter if it's a group or not, but I don't know if you can see it by my arrow there. How there's like a blue box right beside the thumbnail. And you can also see a live preview on the screen showing what it's going to look like. So I'm going to just let go of that. And there you go. The other layers are not damaged, and you can see that this is showing that it's a, it's a uh, crop. Now if I grab my tool here, I can kind of reposition this and, you know, maybe a little bit more... Again, what we can do is we can convert this to a curve so it'll have nodes, and then we can grab our node tool here and maybe fan this out a little bit. There we go. Because once we click this and click off, yep, I still got a little bit over here that I need to kind of work on, but. I click the object. There we go. Let's click the object there, guys. Move this note in just a touch. There we go. Now we have a nice cropped little image that we can use in our illustration for whatever purpose. And all of it was done in Affinity Designer without having to jump out. Which I think is great. And again, I might go over some more tutorials or some more stuff you could do in Affinity Designer as I get time. So hopefully that will, you know, keep everybody thinking that I'm not dead or dropped off the face of the earth. One and two, it might give you all something to try with Affinity Designer because there is a free trial of the software you can go try. And again, it's for PCs and for Mac. So give it a shot. Maybe this is something you can use. And another cool thing you can do, watch this. We can grab that object, make sure I got that one. Go to effects here, but check, check this out. We can also blur that object, which will make it a softer transition down on the bottom there. Soften it way on up. All right, let's try that. Looked off of. See, that's a little softer in how we're gaining this back because of the blur. But it can make that softer if you so need. If I'd have done a better job, I'd have just probably cropped this guy out and just went ahead with the tutorial. But again, this is just for demonstration so you guys will get an idea. The intro to this video, as you probably saw, is not the same as my other ones. I am going to try to work on that as soon as I get some time. It seems like everybody wants me to help them out with something here recently, which is cool. But I will try to get better intros coming in. I will try to get things a little bit more stabilized and try to at least start banging these out a little bit more normal. Hopefully, if nothing else happens and I have to kind of rechange life's events again. So, y'all take it easy. Give this a try. Hopefully, this is something neat that you can use. And I'll see you next time.